The title of our study is The Future of Drop-In Fuels. And the objective of the study is to understand the array of options for converting lignocellulose biomass in California to liquid drop-in fuels for uh, transportation and um, understanding the environmental impacts, the relative costs of these different pathways, and, uh, and how they can contribute to the overall sort of fuel production potential in the state. So people use the term drop-in fuels pretty loosely. Um, the definition that we used is a hydrocarbon fuel that can be blended at a relatively high level, higher than 10%, maybe more like 40 or 50%, um, in a gasoline or a diesel uh, fuel. We like to think of them in terms of pathways. So the ultimate goal is to make some combination of gasoline and diesel replacements. Mm -hmm. And the pathways that we looked at were um, sort of starting with solid biomass, so herbaceous or woody biomass, and uh, through various thermochemical routes, converting those to um, some combination, in some cases, of gasoline and diesel, or maybe just one or the other. And so we looked at uh, pyrolysis, gasification and fischer trope uh, synthesis, and um, gasification and methanol to gasoline. Our study was a combination of a vast literature survey looking at everything that's been published and some things that haven't been published that are just happening in the labs where we work. Uh, we also did a techno-economic analysis to compare the capital and operating costs for all of these different pathways. And we did a life cycle assessment to understand how they stack up based on greenhouse gas emissions, criteria air pollutant emissions, and water use. Uh, and we also did a scenario analysis um, that involves some optimization to understand um, how these different pathways can sort of be pieced together for a statewide strategy for producing drop-in fuels from the feedstocks that we have available. The CADI model that we use to develop our scenarios and all of the data inputs and the outputs are available online um, at our GitHub site. So I would absolutely encourage anybody who's interested to go online, download it, play around with it. You can change the parameters. You can even leave comments for us. We love getting feedback. In every scenario that we ran, um, using these uh, drop-in fuel pathways with the uh, biomass residue that's available, so including forest residue, um, mill waste, crop residue, uh, resulted in a net decrease in greenhouse gas emissions as well as criteria air pollutant emissions. Um, the capital costs and uh, the ultimate minimum fuel selling price ended up being pretty similar for all three pathways. And uh, in terms of the scale of the contribution to California fuel production, um, you know, for gasoline, for example, uh, in one of the scenarios you could achieve about a 13% blend level. So if you consider that ethanol is already 10%, if you can add another 10% or even more, uh, that's a big deal. The diesel market is, is smaller, and so you can take an even bigger chunk out of that if you focus on maximizing diesel production. I think one of the surprising things is uh, from a transportation logistics perspective, um, because uh, there are some feedstock available outside of the state where if you loaded it onto a train, um, you could get it in state uh, with sort of uh, total emissions that are lower or at least not very different than what it takes to transport biomass within the state by truck. Uh, that really, you know, the uh, sort of area from which we can draw biomass extends beyond the state borders if we want it to. Um, you know, ideally, we should be building biorefineries and um, sort of creating jobs in the state. Uh, but there's certainly a case to be made for considering resources outside of our borders. Biofuels are part of a suite of technologies that we have to pursue to meet our greenhouse gas emission goals. So there's no silver bullet, and certainly that applies to biofuels as well. Uh, however, there are some sectors that are really tricky to electrify, so um, heavy-duty freight is one of those. I would argue that air travel is also difficult to electrify, although we didn't focus on jet fuels much in this study. Um, and as the fleet turns over, hopefully people will be buying electric vehicles, for example. Uh, you could certainly do CNG as well. But I think there's going to be some amount of liquid fuel demand for uh, a number of years in California, and this is one way to meet that demand.